<laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? It's another Mix It Up podcast here with your host, Joel Hawkins. You can see it up there. Along with my co host and friend, H. Jenna Jones. Jenna Jones? Jenna Jones. H. Jenna Jones. So I today. I say it the way you did yours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> today, uh, we're going to be doing podcasts. But what we're going to be talking about is something very important. No. <laughs> well, what it is is basically we're going to be discussing essentially troubleshooting, failure, problem solving. I know this may be kind of a generic topic and you're like, well, what, what are you going to apply it to, Joel? A lot of different things. It's just a discussion. That's the whole point. It's a podcast. It's a discussion. We're just talking about stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, We're trying to discuss things, options, whatever. Like here, here's here's my question: What is the most important thing when it comes to being a human on this earth, living in this country or any other country? What is one of the most important things that you could learn in your development years, or even if you're later in life? What is an important thing, a skill that you need to have? Learning how to think for yourself troubleshoot yeah like i honestly think it can be applied to so many different things not just like like physically figuring out like oh my toy broke and like pulling it apart and putting it back together and fixing it and being like oh my toy's fixed yay you know not nothing like that but being able to even troubleshoot your life like growing up i had friends that <laughs> i love to death but like it it was weird it was like there was a disconnect like it, we a problem would happen or occur or something like that and they would be confused like completely like just lost and i'd be like are you okay and they're like why did this happen it, this happened like well, for instance a bully was mean to them at school and my buddy james was like i don't understand why he hates me i'm like he doesn't hate you He's pretty sure he hates me, Joel. And I'm like, no, he's treating you like crap because his life is crap. He feels like crap. He feels horrible. And I know people say, well, that doesn't excuse him. Yes, you are completely and utterly right. My mom always taught me was that when it came to humanity and human behavior is that you have to look at the root of what the source is, the situation. My dad always taught me is that you troubleshoot. You figure out things for yourself and try to do it often in many different situations because in reality, they can be applied to a multitude of other situations, which can help you in the long run grow in that way. And it was always like with bullies, my mom would be like, I'm sorry you feel that. I'm sorry he did that to you. I'm sorry this happened. And they would, you know, go to toe, go to toe for me unless they could tell that it was probably something else that was going on in the background that was great. Now they would be mama bear and papa bear if it was like violence or anger or something like that, that was creating problems where I just felt mentally small, you know? But if I would usually question as a kid, I'd be like, I don't understand why he's treating me like this. And my parents would say, look, uh, he may be going through some stuff in his life. And of course, my parents are Christian, so they'd be like, he probably doesn't have Jesus. Like, that's where he came from. It was like, his family probably aren't Christians. Turns out, most of the time they were. <laughs> so it's not really about if you have Jesus, because sometimes you may have Jesus. You still might treat people like shit. Let's be honest. Look at the Republican Party. <laughs> well, look at the Democrat Party. They're all that way. Anyways, politicians are politicians. They're about greed and money and power control. That's what they're about. They start off nice. They start off wanting to help. Get corrupted over time. But uh, yeah, we just talked about last <laughs> last episode. Go back one. Yeah, go go back one. Yeah, we talked about it quite often, bro. But it's like when you're talking about troubleshooting your life and figuring out things for yourself, you're not always going to figure out everything because it's just not humanly possible. You're always going to make mistakes. You're not going to be perfect mm -hmm. every single time. But but doesn't mean you should just go through life not trying like at all to figure out anything because I definitely had friends growing up who'd be like, I don't know why this is happening. Well, because this or this or could be this and well, which is it? And I'm like, any one of them it can be. Find out. Uh, 
I'm gonna tell my mom. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> tell your mom, but she's gonna tell you the same thing, hopefully. Unless she's that type of person who's like, some people suck. And don't get me wrong, that is a true <laughs> statement. Yeah. <laughs> that you can't really argue with. I mean, Tom Segura said it in a special. He was like, you know, this guy just told me some people suck. And I was like, I can't argue with that. That's actually a really good comeback. That's exactly what's happening. Because some people are just chaos. They, they just got to do what they do. They don't give a shit. You could tell them a logical and emotionally responsible answer. And they're going to be like, I don't fucking care. Fuck you. Like, they're just, they're just going to be shit heels. Like, that's just some people who suck. That's just what it is. <laughs> Not, and sometimes they're just not thinking, not comprehending, and I don't know if it's not understanding what's going on. But no, no, no. Sometimes it might be just deliberate blockage, like yeah. not wanting to know or recognize their own failure. Because let's be honest, in the spectrum of human behavior, you're going to have a lot of people who are going to justify horrible actions. Yeah. Oh. They're going to justify the crap out of it. Or they're going to ignore what you're saying and just continue doing what they're doing because in their mind, it's already justified and correct. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of difficult, but being able to troubleshoot your own life is something you kind of have to learn on your own. You can be kind of taught it. No, you got to go through it. No, you can. I mean, like people can give you starting blocks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or they can walk you through a process of a problem to a solution. But when it comes to actively trying to troubleshoot your own life or figure things out for yourself, it's going to be like, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to fuck up. You're going to make mistakes. But that's the next part of this conversation, which is failure. And it's like, we've gotten to a point where failure in a lot of aspects of this country and the world is considered like it's considered to be like just the ultimate oh you've lost everything mm -hmm. like it's not a stepping stone it, in science it's a stepping stone when you fail you try again differently don't do the same thing <laughs> that's the definition of insanity when you do the same thing over and over and over and expect different yielding results it's, not it's, going it's to. still not working i gotta do it again yeah yeah it's like <laughs> uh, a plus b equals purple why didn't that work? Let me try it again. <laughs> mm -mm. Now we're going to do B plus A. B oh. plus A equals purple. Oh, it did work equal purple. Yeah, yeah, got <laughs> it. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's troubleshooting and failure is a part of that process. It's just, you're not always going to get it right. You're not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to be on point or poignant or whatever. So being able to kind of take a lot of humility within yourself and like be honest about it situation is you're not going to make everything perfect you're not going to perfection doesn't actually actively exist in this world we're decaying at every point in time you know that's just the way it works so it's it's i don't know it's it's showcasing failure as understanding it's a stepping stone to getting it right so you can fail ten thousand times and then you get it right you're only going to remember the getting it right the failures, you're not going to remember the millions or 10,000 or 100,000 or a million failures. You're not going to remember that. You're not going to care about that because you eventually got it right. Yeah. That's a learning process. That's how it works. I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people in this world tend to overuse that failure as an excuse to not do anything. I mean, sometimes you're afraid to, afraid to fail and then you end up not doing anything. You just don't try at all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fear of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That part, it, it, it seems, it seems inconsequential sometimes, but it's really not. It's, it happens quite often, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> and you wish that it wouldn't. You're like, man, I just wish people could like work that out for themselves. You know, like I've even, like what I've, for, I've had setbacks before and things like that where my business has almost ended twice. <laughs> Harvey, Harvey came along and, and I was like, COVID. I just lost 96% of my clientele. This is not good. Like, how do I survive this? You know, because a lot of them lost their businesses. They're yeah. not going to spend money on marketing tools and things like that because they just lost their business. Yeah. So I had that happen. And then I, and then, uh, I was just starting to get back on track and I was like, I'm going to open a new leg of business. Let me start selling 
my designs, but start selling the end result, which is, uh, you know, the actual products, marketing materials, promotional materials, things like that. So the company I was working doing design part time for, you know, I was going to start selling their products. I had a hundred different, 130 different meetings scheduled. I did 10. I got a new car because mine wasn't trustworthy enough. I mean, the windows were blocked up and locked up. It had no AC. So the only way I had any air movement in the car during 100 degree days was if I turned the vents on off the engine. So being cooked alive, but it was the only air movement. So it was the only thing actually making me survive. I will say this, though, my body adapted to the point where I could be in 90 degree weather and not sweat as much as you think because the hot heat coming off the engine would actually hit the sweat and cool my skin for a half a second. <laughs> Not long. It didn't feel like, it felt more like microwaving myself, but <laughs> but still, it, or air frying, I should say. Yeah, <laughs> air frying makes more sense. But um, yeah, so that's like how I live my life. I was like, I need to get a, like a, a really crappy car that I can just drive or whatever else. So I, for months, I searched. And I actually found a decent low mileage car that was decent on gas at Carvana, which I will buy from them till the end of the day that I die because that car was fan freaking tastic. And I still use it today. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I ended up uh, uh, getting that car and then I'm opening this new, okay, I'm gonna start selling these products, do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, what, three months later? 10, 10 meetings I have down. I have another 115, 120 to do. And March 15th rolls around 2020. And all of yeah. a sudden I hear from four or five different clients that are like, oh, sorry, I got to cancel the meeting, you know, because of what's going on. And I'm like, okay. And like in that week, I'm like, I just had like five meetings. I just had 10 meetings canceled. What the hell's going on? Then I actually went and turned on the news somewhere because <laughs> I didn't watch it. And it was like COVID pandemic. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, I noticed a lot of people wearing masks more often. I didn't know that first 10 days. I was paying attention, I guess. Mm, troubleshooting. Need to be doing that all times. I noticed that when they shut down South by Southwest and we were like, there's no way. They're not going to shut that down. Whatever, yeah. it's going to blow over. Wait, it shut down? <laughs> the whole festival? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's so when we realized it was real. Yeah. So once that happened, I was like, ah, uh, man, because it was only what, two, three years after Harvey happened or two years after Harvey happened? No, no. Harvey happened. Well, that was in Austin. It's three Harvey years. Happened. It's three years. No, uh, it was mid 2017 is when Harvey happened. Because I remember I quit the band the month before Harvey hit. I quit doing music the month before Harvey hit. But, uh, yeah, so it was just, um, <laughs> so yeah, when the pandemic hit, I was like, my company may not survive this. Like, I was like, this sucks, dude. And everybody, and it started to get okay around 2021. And I was like, yeah, this is going to be good. It's it's getting better. This is good. It's going to be ending. And then by 2022, I was like, oh my God, it's so <laughs> much worse. <laughs> it got better for three months. And then everybody was like, yeah, it's going to end. We're all and I was like, it's not ending? Fuck. Okay. Well, now we're just going to tighten the purse strings permanently until it stops. And then it was a year oh, after they, they it said ended. it's making a comeback this year in the fall. Well, technically, my nephew already got it again. Yeah, like, we had, had it someone, three or four times now. We had someone cancel a studio booking with COVID. And we're like, oh, okay. yeah, it's all coming back. That's a song. Coming back to me now. Where did that song come from? That's in my deep memory. That's a movie or a TV show. I know the song. What's the song? I don't remember. Coming back to me. It's all coming back. It's all coming back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's that from? I have no idea. That's the only part of the song I know. And I That's obviously the only part of the song I, don't I know all the words, obviously. That's the only part of the song I knew. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. It's probably a fucking pop culture movie, and that's why we both know only that part. 
we're gonna be like, I remember what movie? Yeah. <laughs> so do I. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Why do we remember that part of it and not the movie? That's weird. I think secretly because ballads can be attractive. No. Um. So I mean, what what is your pr- what is your process and idea? Because you have kids. So what is your process and idea when it comes to like troubleshooting and failure? How do you teach that? I always have to make a plan. That's one thing my mom instilled in me. And she was like, when shit happens, don't freak out unless you don't have a plan. And then make a plan. <laughs> Not freak out. Yeah. She was giving you no excuse to freak out whatsoever. Yeah. And it actually helped. Like when, when shit's going on, like I don't stress. I, like. The worst it'll ever be is like for a few hours, I'll be like mad or upset or depressed, or just like random emotions. And then I'll go listen to some music, cool off. And then I come down, and I got pen and paper. I'm like, all right, so this is what we need. So we're going to get there. And then this is the other thing we can do too. Yep. <laughs> got me a plan. I'm good. And then I exercise the plan. And if it doesn't work, revise it. But it's always about trying to just have a plan because I mean shit always happens. And if you don't if you don't know the next step, then you're gonna waste so much time just freaking out. Like, okay, are we gonna fix this problem? No, we're still freaking out. Let me come back in a few hours. No, still freaking out. Okay, the problem is getting worse. We're gonna we're gonna start no. Yes, we're gonna start <laughs> fixing it now. There we go. Okay. Uh, so for me it's about having a plan and Executing that plan. Yeah. Not perfectly because no one does it perfectly. Yeah. And even with kids, you know, like they, our kids have completely different personalities and just where they are in life. Like our oldest, where she was, when my youngest was five, was just completely different. You know, where Eric was when he was five, completely different. And like, man, we got to figure out how to teach them to all go this way <laughs> but their paths are like this I just at some point I need you to get here how we're gonna do it <laughs> but we need to end over there dude that's the way well that's the way my parents were uh, I know they were that way cause like me it was I was independent like drastically independent like my mom said that I'd wake up as a kid now before the girls a little bit different because I was the only kid. But uh, after the girls were born, then it was like, it was it was obvious. Like I treated mom like a lounge chair in the morning. Like I'd wake up and be like, and I'd come to sit in her lap and I'd just chill for like 10, 15 minutes. If I didn't get that chill time, I was a terror the entire day. <laughs> just an asshole. Just an asshole the entire day. <laughs> I wouldn't listen. I wouldn't do anything. I'd like, come on, I'm like, you didn't give me my 10 minutes. Like, I was just, I was upset. And I've been that way since day one. <laughs> but it, it was like, I'd just be sitting there in her lap, just. Okay, I'm good. I'm ready to go play. Like, just and book it. And then I was independent. I was just, I do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. As long as it didn't infringe upon the civil liberties of other people's, I was good. But, um, as kids, like we're vastly different. It was like, Joel wants to leave. Like <laughs> my mom said one time that I was just standing there beside her and everything else. And she had the girls and I was just like, oh, I'm going to walk out in the street. Like I didn't even <laughs> care. I was the kid. You had to worry about doing shit without people's permission whatsoever. <laughs> like <laughs> my mom was at church. One of the other deacons or she was talking to or whatever. And like, she just looked at me and then looked back and he just went and like started moving as I'm, she's following his eye and just sees me like, like Naruto, like running in the parking lot. There are cars leaving and driving and I'm just bucking it. Ah, like just running as fast as I can. She's like, oh, and he's like, the guy was like, that kid's going to die soon. <laughs> like, <laughs> like He's not going to live long if he doesn't realize that. I just had no fear. I was as a as a baby, an infant, like a not an infant. I was two years old or something like that. I escaped my crib. I unlocked the front door. Middle of a thunderstorm. I walked out to the edge of the driveway, sat on the curb, and sang "Itsy Bitsy Spider" to the top of my lungs. 
on a Sunday. My sister wakes up and goes, Ah, oh, Joel singing. <laughs> she goes out, looks in my room. No one there. <laughs> she goes, what the fuck? Huh? And like thinks, okay, maybe he's in the living room. And then looks, no one's in the living room. Mom and dad are asleep. Where the fuck is Joel? Like, <laughs> looks and the front door's open and goes, oh my God. Like, <laughs> she yells at mom and dad. Mom, dad, Joel's escaped the house. Like, comes out and I'm just like, in the mom the moment mom and on the mom. Like, just singing in the rain, full thunderstorm. Didn't even care. No cares to the world. Like, just weird kid, man. Just doing whatever he wanted when he wanted. <laughs> I don't know. I was a weird child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my parents could literally leave me in a room, give me some Hot Wheels, <laughs> and I could just be ignored for like 14 hours. It just exists. Never had to worry about what I was doing. Wasn't being too messy. I was just chilling, having a good time, respecting my own privacy. <laughs> like, dude, it was almost like I lived as roommates with my parents. <laughs> like, as a kid. <laughs> I was roommates with them. And of course, they'd be like parents, you know, like, take out the trash. And I'd be like, okay. When I want to. <laughs> <laughs> and then my dad knew how to get me. Spankings weren't going to work. So he used mental torture. That worked really well. <laughs> Joel likes to watch TV. Now Joel can't watch TV. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do whatever you want. I'm sorry. Like he knew how to effectively put, and it wasn't just the fact you can't watch any TV. No, he went the above and beyond. He was very talented at being able to punish without being cruel. And it was like, here's the kitchen. Here's the living room. Here's the TV. Here's a little piece of wall. Sit right there. I'd stand against that wall and he would argue with himself and talk with himself at me. So like, you know what you did wrong? Um, you didn't take out the trash. Your mother specifically asked you, you didn't take out the trash. I would like to know what is wrong with you. And he would start yelling at me, right? I never answered anything he said. I didn't have to, he'd answer it with another question. Do you know what you did wrong? You know what you did wrong. Do you think you can remember? Of course you can remember. Like he, he would just answer his own questions. I was like, do I need to be here for this? But at the same time, he would keep me up against that wall. And he'd be like, 6.30. And I'm like, oh, TV shows are about to start. And he'd be like, I don't know. Like in his mind, I could see in his eyes. He was like, you ain't going. I'm going to have fun with this. So he'd keep me against that wall. Yelling, arguing with me, talking at me. I'd have to listen to mom watching the news, which that's probably why I hated the news and never watched it again <laughs> was because I heard enough of it in my high school years of being tortured. And then my dad would basically just yell at me and proceed to yell at me. Once spanking stopped working, that's what he would do. He knew how to hurt me because I, I missed so many episodes of stuff I wanted to watch, like Buffy and Angel and whatever else I was into. Like, he would literally just keep me against that freaking wall and just let me know you ain't going to go see nothing. And when 9 p.m. hits and you hear MASH go, you know you've missed everything you wanted to watch. <laughs> Little did he know that's how I became a fan of MASH. <laughs> And that is problem solving. And rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> Can't watch what I want to watch. I'll watch something. Hey, this is a good show. Yeah. <laughs> well, as a kid, I liked MASH when they would watch it. Because it was still technically like reruns prime time, though. But I think the reason why I really fell in love with that show is because I saw all 11 seasons of it in less than a year and a half of watching the four episode block after nine. And then the four episode block from two to four a.m. When I was in college and drinking, that's what was playing. So it was like, man, Mash just keeps finding out what time I'm awake. And that's what they're (laughs) shooting for, dude. Yeah. No, I love that show. It's a great show. It's an amazing show. Weird face. It's a great show. I never watched it. You need to watch it now. You'll be like, man, I missed out. I didn't realize it has so much crap in it. 
It does. Like oh, the there's first, plenty of old shows. The first three watching, seasons yeah. are like it, it's good, it's funny, but it doesn't have as much heart. But when you watch like season three past, dude, they talk about some shit, like some real shit, like real stuff going on that was like. I even think, you know, I'm like, this is the 70s and the 80s. And they're talking about stuff that's like happening now, like politics and friendship and relationships. And like they're talking about stuff that was happening a little bit then, but is really happening now, Mm -hmm. like division and anger and hatred, like just so much stuff. Okay. Do a face. You never do a face. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta understand when I look for thumbnails, the most faces you literally are. I don't know if you have like some weird like preset in your body where it's like preset one, preset two, preset three, preset four. Like you do the same thing every time. Pay attention. And then when I was five. little, they drilled into me that when someone's talking, you look them in the eye and you pay attention. Stop moving around and doing all but, that but other stuff. So I just pay attention. Yeah, my parents did that to me too. It's called Annex, and I just rebelled the crap out against that. I was like, I will do my Annex when I want to. <laughs> it never worked. My dad always made me do what he wanted, but it was always like in my mind, I was more rebellious than I actually was. It was like, <laughs> like my eye would do the creepy crip and he'd be like quit your annex and I'd be like in my head I'd be like oh, I'm out. but I'd be totally stone faced like okay love you dad I love you too son <laughs> <laughs> but he did he loved me to death he was just trying to make me into not a turd There's plenty of them out there I'm pretty sure that's just what parents jobs is to do don't be an asshole. Don't like be it's dick. either now some parents are equipped to do that. Some parents aren't equipped to even keep your child alive. Like they don't <laughs> even have that skill set. Oh, those poor parents. Mostly it's just choice. There's a reason they're that way. But uh, for most parents, it's just don't make your kid a turd. All we ask for. Don't make him a turd. Don't make him a turd. Please don't make him a turd. Because and I would like it if all parents we could stop generational talking that would be cool generation X millennials baby boomers I would like that to end I don't even know which one I'm supposed to be part of we're literally in between two we're in between millennials because we graduated high school at the year they were supposedly their generation started but then they started changing it every two years. It started going backwards. It was like, oh, now millennials are born in 1983. And I'm like, okay, I kind of see that. Not really. I mean, millennials, I would think would be born in 90, you know, <laughs> but okay. And then it's like, nah, generation Z is born in 2003. I'm like, so you're leaving a 10 year gap between that? No, millennials covers all the way up to there. And I'm like, that's not really right either. Cause like I grew up generation X and millennial or generation Xennial or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. I mean, I grew up in the time when we had toys and we played games and we had Atari and like, like that was the bulk of video games. You had SNES, NES, Sega. all that. Yeah. Sega. That was great stuff. I miss that song the hedgehog. Yeah. But um, Toe Jam and Earl. Remember that one? <gasps> you never played that on Second Genesis? Toe Jam and Earl. Are you serious? Wow, oh, really? It was like a hip hop video game. I was to say. That you like hip hop. I know that for <laughs> a fact. Don't even play. Back then, I was a jazz saxophonist. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it would have been weird. It wasn't good hip hop. <laughs> it was a video game made for kids, so it obviously wasn't good hip hop. Wasn't like NWA is gonna come on here and start like really jamming out Toe Jam and Earl. No, it definitely wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. Remember Parappa Rappa? Wow, 
Are you serious? Hmm. I think you make that one up. No. <laughs> that was another video game. That was on Sony PlayStation. Oh, I didn't have PlayStation. Oh. Never had PlayStation. Well, neither did I. I didn't own one. <laughs> I, didn't have, I was against it. It was Nintendo 64. To In death. fact, I think the first PlayStation I ever owned was PlayStation 2. That was the only one. And I bought it secondhand from a kid who was like, oh, I don't really care about video games anymore. And I was like, well, that's a lie. <laughs> you just don't care about video games right now because girls think guys who play video games are dorky. That's why you don't care about it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah still smashing but also playing video games <laughs> i'm not allowing myself to lose something i love <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was never that guy i had many friends who were like that do you ever have friends that were like that who would change who they are as a person to impress a girl oh but i mean like permanently change themselves as a person like for real not some guy who's just like oh, let me sweep up all these condom wrappers no i'm talking <laughs> to like like somebody who's like seriously changed their personality just to benefit a possible relationship. Maybe. <clears throat> I've got one one good friend from college that just disappeared from the face of the planet. <laughs> I love how you're looking at the camera like he's definitely going to be watching this. No, and he he's knows. not because I don't know where he's at. No one seems to know where he's at. And all of our mutual friends from college are like, hey, have you ever heard from so-and-so? Nope. Ever since him and uh, old girl got together. He just Talking about Rashad? Him. No, 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 no. I was about to say that'd be really funny. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a different person. If we I just guessed disappeared. it. <laughs> disappeared and we're like, okay. I guess we were all his best friend. And well, that happens a lot of the times with relationships. Come on now. You don't. You, and yeah. To an extent. No. Okay. I'll tell you this. I had two friends that I actually got together. And it was so uncomfortable that they were together. That I actually stopped hanging out with them because of how uncomfortable it was. Because I'm the one that helped them get it together. So then if they ever had trouble, guess who has to hear from them? Both sides. Me. Well, yeah, that's because you're on both sides. Of it. Yeah. Normally, you don't know who the girlfriend but is. But the way they talked to me was almost like they were blaming me while complaining about the other person. Do you know what that feels like? Never hooked you wouldn't anybody believe up. what blah, blah, Jed. What do you do? He blah, 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 this. Thank you very much for introducing me. I heard that phrase way too <laughs> fucking much from both of them in a year's time. They're like, he just blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, that's not that bad. Oh, yeah, of course you would say that you're the one that introduced us. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> fuck off. Like, I stopped being their friends because I was tired of being blamed for the reason they're unhappy. I'm like, break up. Oh, that's what you would want because you introduced us. Now you don't want to deal with the responsibility. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I should have never gotten involved. And I really didn't. It was like, hey, is she single? Yeah. That's the most I did. <laughs> that's all I did. I didn't do anything you else. Sure you didn't walk over. Hey, my friend wants to meet you. Okay. You didn't do that part? No, they were both like talking to me about each other. And I was like, you gave them the courage to I guess. do something, and that's what it is. I was like, if you like each other, you like each other, okay. Can you tell them that I like it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> this is weird. Just tell them. My friend over there thinks you're really cute. Yeah, exactly. It was weird. But yeah, I got like uber blamed for their horrible relationship. And I didn't hang out with them for like a long time. And then we hung out again. And then everything busted wide open horribly and I went why is this happening <laughs> like I was just so confused I was like it's been 13 years or whatever it's been leave me alone <laughs> why are you keep torturing me <laughs> why won't you just leave it alone <laughs> like it was just so bad it was so bad and I can't even talk about it because it was really really bad but uh yeah it was so bad I did not deserve any of that <laughs> That, that part was honestly, it brought back to my mind after it was all over. It brought back to my mind. My dad would say something like, well, you may have not done something this time, but you did something that you got away with. And I'm like, yep. good God, Lord. I it's, mean, hey, it's true. Did I do that much? Jeez. And then sometimes <laughs> your parents just walk over and smack you. Like, what was that for? I know you did something. No, I didn't. At some point. Wait, what? Which <laughs> I have had friends who've been in marriages who have literally been like, do you know how weird it is to be dead asleep? 
Your wife wakes up. And she's so flipping angry. And she slaps you awake. And I went, oh, why? And he goes, because you cheated on her in a dream. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, that, that's real? That's not a TV thing? He goes, nope. <laughs> not a real TV thing. And was mad at me the next three days. Like, just kicking me. Coming up and elbowing me in the side. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> it's in your mind. <laughs> Why are you angry? I've never understood that. It's like, it doesn't make sense. But it's you don't, super you, weird. You don't, you don't want to comment. So just delete it. Okay, nope. this is this nope. is nope. This, this is actually pretty funny. <laughs> this part's actually pretty funny. So I was dating this girl. Very kind, very understanding. Friend I've had for forever. <laughs> I'm sitting at my office with H. We're working on graphics oh, and stuff. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. We're working on graphics and stuff. So she's like sending me a message. She's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like working. She's like, yeah, okay. I'm like, no, I'm I'm literally working. And she's like, yeah, I bet you are. I bet you got some beautiful blonde over there, the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm, where'd that come from? Like, it was just out of nowhere, out of left field. And I'm like, she's like, oh, I'll have the a stupid baby to talk to. <laughs> She's like, all I have is a baby to talk to. And I was just trying to call you. Like, oh, you're too busy. Like doing that whole pretending it's kind of a joke, but you know, they're being real about yeah. it and truthful. And so I decided to be kind of an asshole. <laughs> I told H, I'm like, hey, come with me real quick to the bathroom, which of course H's face was like, eh, what? <laughs> I was like, just, just come in. And we go into the bathroom and I'm taking a, like a selfie. I would have maybe taken 10 selfies my entire life. And that was one of them. Aww. And it was well that worth was it. Special. And, I, and I told him to put a white towel on his head. So it looked like he had blonde hair. And I took a picture of it and I sent it to her and she just went, Ha oh, ha, very funny. And like, stop talking to me because I obviously just showed her. No, I'm not cheating on you, dummy. I'm working. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. But yeah, and then of course the next day she's like, "Oh, I was just kidding with you. I wasn't serious." I'm like, "You stop talking to me. You were for sure serious about yeah. what you said. Don't lie now and try to pretend like you're just kicking it." No. Yeah. So that stuff's always fun, though. Honestly, I I rib her about it every now and then when I talk to her. I'm like. From that time, you shut up about that time, Joel. <laughs> I said it was playing, Joel. What serious? What serious? I was just joking. <laughs> no, you weren't. You were not. I know you're watching this episode <laughs> in video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for the analytics. One person ended. <laughs> right there. I know who's watching there. Yeah, I love you, buddy. I do. But um. <laughs> uh, so yeah when it comes to like troubleshooting your life and figuring it out you know just be honest with what it is assess it properly realize you can be the problem sometimes you can be in your own way <laughs> yeah, very much so you can be your own problem and making life more difficult and just being okay with failure it's okay to be okay with failure it's okay to understand that failure is just a stepping stone to you getting it correct or at least knowing that there's no real point in pursuing because a lot of people don't talk about that part i've had a lot of friends who have literally tried to keep doing this and they it turns out when they do get it they're like i don't actually want this mm. Like when I first started getting some fame as a musician, I was realizing very quickly, I don't really like this because people, it made me uncomfortable when people were like, oh my God, you're awesome. Blah, blah, blah. Get him your autograph. And I'd be like, oh. like, it felt weird for me to be like, yeah, okay. Why? Oh my God, you open for blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Like it just felt odd. It felt wrong. Felt like you shouldn't be. I wanted to say that like every time it was like, you should really find something in your own life that's worthwhile. <laughs> like, stop being so desperate. You really don't need to be worshiping me in any way, shape, or form. And that's true as of this channel. <laughs> uh, we love you guys. We like talking. We like conversating, having discussions on different topics, and doing some fun stuff. It's a... <laughs> 
<laughs> you finally did a I face. I want to join in. You did a face. You did a face. <laughs> and we're going to use that in the thumbnail. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so. I got uh, a thumbnail. Yeah. <laughs> You're always in the thumbnail, dude. <laughs> mm. So, uh, to all you out there, you can succeed if you try, but know that everyone does have limitations. I mean, I hate to say stuff like that, but it's, I've had a lot of friends who've wasted their lives on things they didn't actually want. And that sucks. And I feel my wife can't reach the top show. (laughs) Well, all she needs to do is wear, uh, step stools, step shoes. We have step stools. (laughs) We have step shoes. Creepy nonetheless. Anyways, yeah. so uh we love you guys. Um whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, better health, better wealth, my friends. Find some happiness and give it a hug. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>